Chuka has always been a good place to cross the Murray River. Something that was recognised very early on by a fellow called James Maidens, who in 1845 saw a business opportunity by setting up a punt right here near Echuca to help the squatters get their livestock across the river. Eight years later, in 1853, a fellow called Henry Hopwood set up in opposition to Maiden and a very interesting rivalry began. Hopwood recognised the unique position of Echuca and set up his punk just to the north, where the site of the current town is today. Records show that between June 1856 and June 1857, over 150,000 head of stock crossed the river here. This was a time before any bridges or dams, so Hopwood and Maiden did very well. Henry Hopwood was an intriguing character, described as having a brusque manner, like Othello, a rudeness of speech. He was not prone to modesty and even proclaimed himself the founder of the town. Either way, he was a very enterprising fellow. He actually built the Bridge Hotel on the northern bank of the river, which is still there today. And as an example of his mode of business, he simply shut the punt down in the evening, guaranteeing he had an audience at the bar at night. There was keen competition between the two protagonists, but it was Hopwood who eventually won the day. Hopwood convinced the Victorian government to construct riverport facilities adjacent to his punt service, and the town of Echuca took shape. Maiden eventually sold up his business and went to the gold fields to sell fresh meat. What has only just been discovered was that both Hopwood and Maiden were ex-convicts, sentenced on the same day in 1834 in the same court in Lancashire. It appears that despite the rivalry between the two rivermen. They were to keep the knowledge of their chequered convict past a secret to all. And in a remarkable coincidence, they both died on the same day, the 1st of January, 1869, by which time Echuca was well and truly up and running, due largely to their entrepreneurial spirit. By now, the town was thriving and the wharf was extended. In its prime, it occupied over a kilometre of the Murray River bank. The wharf is built of solid river red gum. The reason for the three levels like this was to accommodate the rise and fall of the river. Back then, the Murray River was a far more turbulent proposition than it is now, and its height would vary dramatically. Boats could keep working now, no matter how dry or high the river was. During the 1870s, it became a highway, but instead of trucks, it was paddle steamers loaded with wool and produce from the rapidly expanding rural industries. The town hit its peak during the late 1870s, with over 400 paddle steamers and barges operating on the river. During the 1880 navigation season, over 95,000 wool bales were shipped through Echuca. Echuca's position was the key, the closest point on the Murray River to Melbourne. And once the port facilities were in place in the 1860s, it became the hub for all river transportation. All roads seemed to lead to Echuca. And then, <laughs> the railway came. Initially, this relationship between the railway and the river port was a very positive one. It was nicknamed 
the meeting of the whistles. Pachuca's population boomed after the arrival of the railway, and yet more business was done through the port. The produce was unloaded from the boats, straight onto the railway, and taken through to the port at Melbourne for distribution around the world. Crossing the river here at Echuca has always been a controversial affair. In the early days, the fees charged to use Hopwood's punt were exorbitant. So in the 1860s, the locals agitated for a bridge to be built. Intense rivalry between the two colonies of New South Wales and Victoria over who was to pay for and operate the bridge caused delays in the work of over 10 years. But finally, in 1878, the work was complete but still the public weren't able to use the bridge as it had been leased to a private railway company. Finally, the incensed locals decided to storm the bridge from either end in what's become known as the Bridge Riot. The authorities were forced to allow public access. And to this day, this very busy and iconic bridge has never officially been opened. The wharf remains the busiest paddle steamer port in the world today. The PS Hero will soon join the fleet here. It's been restored by Kevin Hutchison, who spent his life on the paddle steamers of Echuca. This is oak and this is the cork, the decks. You put in three, two or three lay between the seams on the planks, keep the water out, keep the boat nice and tight. The whole hull's done, I guess. It's, practice goes back hundreds of years. Captain Cook's boat for cork the same. We do ours the same too. The Hero was built in 1874 by the same designers that worked on the Adelaide. In 1954, it burnt to the waterline. And then Kevin and his associates salvaged the hull. We got the Hero here in February 1998. It was a very badly damaged boat, burnt to the waterline and later sunk and knocked around by the floods that over the years. And then we just reframed it, replanked it, and then put new decks on, done the upworks, and all to all photos. This is the fifth boat that's been rebuilt at the port of Echuca. You can see two or three others alongside here working. That's been my life. The expansion of the rail network throughout the country, improvements in road transport, and the fluctuations in the river meant the gradual demise of Echuca's river port. But ironically, it was the railways ceasing to use the port in 1936 that was the final death knell. Hi, how are you? The Adelaide is the third oldest surviving paddle steamer in the world. She was laid up in a park before her eventual restoration and relaunch in the 1980s. Prince Charles and Lady Di supported her restoration and were there to celebrate her return to the Murray. Nowadays, she's the pride of the Port of Echuca's fleet. The finest red gum stained and shaken, bolted to the hull. The work was done, the sun was hot as hell. The corking tools were silent now, the oakum fixed in place. To fill the seams when the water made it swell. No knots or flaws in this steamer's make or a gum seams in its wood. Just 80 tons of steaming, gleaming boat. 30 horsepower as a heart, she was slipped down and loudly cheered. The finest paddle steamer yet to float. See the engineer with his wet black face, his eyes fixed on the valve. Two rings from Swan, the captain, time to move. Logs are waiting far upstream, empty barges to be filled. They had a powerful new queen with work to do. And there's Ernie Waits, old organ ass, his dax that looked like bells. Named after the ill wind that he blew. Jimmy Choo, the Chinaman, the cook, or so he said. He made a lousy cake and a highly suspect stew. The key to Echuca's early prosperity was the port, sustained over the years by agriculture. Now, through an extraordinary restoration project that began in the early 1970s, the port is again the impetus for
for Echuca's economic success. Instead of all bales, it's now us. Those of us who are happy to leave the 21st century behind. Hear the whistle scream and the skipper sound the bell. The first lady of the Murray Rounds have been.